Hello everyone, this is me today Nuts. Hope you guys are doing well and are safe. Today we'll be continuing the OAS Top 10 2021 video series. I've covered the first uh, cont uh, first risk in the previous video along with OAS Overview. And in this video, we'll be looking at cryptographic failures that is A02 2021. So as we can see from the 2017 version, like uh, sensitive data exposure is moved to cryptographic failures in 2021. And sensitive data exposure was like a broad term mentioned, and but cryptographic failure is more like you know narrowed down version towards cryptography. So let's just get started. Okay, so in order to understand cryptographic failures, we need to understand what is cryptography. So cryptography is nothing but a set of security protocol algorithms and everything which is in place to ensure that confidentiality, integrity, authentication, non-repetition is maintained. So Confidentially, nothing but, you know, the data should not be disclosed to some unauthorized person. Integrity is the data should not be tampered. Authentication is something like if you're communicating with some server or something, and you should know that this server is actually the server who he intends to be that way. So that's authentication. And then non-repudiation is basically whatever actions somebody performs, so they cannot deny that this was not performed by them basically that and also so main uh, goal obviously would be like you know to keep the data secure and everything so data addressed and data in transit so data address not is nothing but your data which is residing on the server hard drive or something or in your system as well your personal laptops desktops so on and data in transit is nothing but whenever you send some uh, credit card information or something to make a payment so obviously that information will go from your device to the server so basically that data will travel right so in transit also the data has to be secure and not only at rest so basically it ensures that cryptography ensures that so cryptographic failures in that basically it occurs due to multiple reasons so we'll look at few over your high level overview uh using plain text protocols that is http ftp and smtp so basically these protocols are used without s or ssl connection is not established over here so this protocol whichever go in transit right so that can be intercepted by any uh network capture tool or something and you can actually analyze the data or something like that whoever is present on the network who has access to the network that way so you get hold of those particular data which you send that's why they are not used and we use https and so on so second thing is like using weak encryption or hash algorithms like uh, des rc44 for encryption and md5 sha1 for hash so basically it's like you're using some security over here but they are not uh, strong enough they are very weak so it's as good as you have a villa or a bungalow or something and the fencing which you have put it's like you know of uh, some wood or something like that so it's very weak and it's not a concrete fence or something so it does not pro provide that good security and obviously it's vulnerable for attack so that way and other thing is untrusted ca root so whenever the so, uh, servers they usually have the ssl certificates right so basically if that ssl certificate the certificate chain is not trusted okay so sometimes in the browsers you do get errors like the certificate cannot be validated or verified or something of that sort so that means it's signed by a c untrusted ca root or something of that sort so that's another thing for cryptographic failures because it can be actually signed by some untrusted CA root and you would not know if that server is actually who he claims to be that way. And then comes insecure cryptography key usage. So basically what happens is in cryptography, you do have uh, private keys and everything, right? So private keys do have to be rotated like uh, over a period of time according to your, you know, the organization's policy or something and also sometimes it does happen that your uh, private key or something was uh, exposed or there was some attack and the key was compromised but they don't rotate or regenerate that private key so that's another insecure key usage and also uh, it happens that you're using a encryption algorithm which is decent but you're using like weak keys or something of that sort so that's what it is over here for cryptographic failures. Obviously, there are many more things which are involved, but just to give you an eye level overview, this is it. And we'll just look at a few of the example, how it works so that, you know, we understand better. So this is just a simple understanding of cryptographic failures to go into detail. Obviously, there's a lot to it. So we'll just look at a web application server over here who is handling a credit card transaction and it is only supporting HTTP. That's it. 
So I, I understand like uh, this may be a bit far-fetched, but uh, yes, it's only supporting HTTP. Uh, the server has, uh, the organization over here has um, budget issues, so they cannot afford SSL and certificates and everything. So they are just going with HTTP only. So we do have a user over here that is allies, and now she wants to have some, you know, kind of transaction or something done. So, you know, the HTTP only uh, connection is established from allies to the web application server. And now if you look over here, since that is red, right, the HTTP only thing, because it is HTTP only, it's vulnerable, right? Anybody who has access to the network or that transaction or that data flow can capture that data using a simple network capture tool or something and, you know, get the data in plain text. That's it. So there's a user over here, that over here, and he actually wants to, you know, get hold of this information because he knows that the server is running only HTTP only, uh, HTTP only model. And so he, what he tries to do is he tries to place his network capture tool over here and gets hold of, uh, he tries to get hold of some of the information. So allies then, you know, completes a transaction over here and she sends the credit card number and security code required for the payment. She wants to do some payment of some subscription or something. And then Dart over here, since he has his network capture tool in place, he gets allies' credit card number and, <coughs> sorry, the security code. So this is what uh, HTTP only does. So there's no SSL involved over here. Anybody can sniff your traffic and it's not like you know your credit card number and security code is not secured and it's disclosed so let's look at it in a much better way obviously this uh, dummy application just ignore the graphics and everything of this but there's a dummy web application over here which is you know telling you to click uh, and submit a payment for some subscription and it, it will ask you to enter the credit card number and the security code so this uh, dummy application is running HTTP only. Okay, there's no S over here. So there's no HTTP with SSL. So basically, uh, same thing what Allies was trying to do, right? So she enters the credit card number over here and as well as the security code. And then later on, she just, you know, tries to click to pay. And after that, what happens is we do have this... Uh, dart over here right with the network capture tool and he gets this capture uh you know between allies and the server he gets this capture and if we can see closely over here, obviously there's a lot of data where you don't need to get confused but uh, we'll look into this maybe some other time but it's just uh, http uh, traffic which is going and there's a post request being sent to the web application server and if we can see the data which was sent by allies right the credit card number and the security code is captured in this form because HTTP is used. That's it. There's no SSL over here. So Dart is able to get this information. He is happy. He can use it further for any further transactions or something that way. So this is what uh, cryptographic failures occur. Like, you know, it occurs because of using plain text protocols. So let's just look at uh, another example over here. And we do have one web application server. They have the budget and everything. And they're like, okay, we'll be using HTTPS. That's it. And obviously, just look at uh, the server's private key as well over here because each HTTPS connection will have a private key as well. So the server's private key is present over here. And there's another user that is Bob. And what Bob tries to do is he tries to establish a secure HTTP uh, SSL connection that is HTTPS connection over here because the server supports HTTPS only does not support HTTP and Bob will try to you know send some secret data to the web application server and he takes the secret data over here and he wants to send it to the web application server but uh, Dart again over here he's curious he's like okay even though the server has HTTPS I'll try to get something and try to find out some information so this is just a high level overview i'm mean, obviously there are multiple things uh, in back of it like web application server will have databases load balancers and uh, all this like between the ssl connection there are multiple steps which takes place i'll just go in a high level uh, just to give an overview so we do have this dart over here he installs his network capture tool again over here and he tries to sniff the data or something which bob will send to the HTTPS uh, web application server and the secret data which he'll, Bob will be sending will go in like you know ciphertext or something so it will be encrypted because of SSL over there the green line SSL 
and we can see that ABC, it's not actually an encrypted data, but I just, uh, you know, just to understand, I've just written some characters over here. And also this data that once he gets it, he'll not be able to understand what it is. It's not the secret data of what he was looking for because it is encrypted and it's useless for him. Like he doesn't understand what it is. So now let's look at another similar scenario where obviously it's the same scenario where Bob wants to send some data, secret data using HTTPS to the web application server. So what happens now is the server, which is there, it has the server's private key, right? And Dart again wants to, you know, try and get hold of this particular data. He's, he's trying to find out what that secret data is. So recently it occurred that the web application server, which is there, uh, there was an attack on that server and there was some sensitive information and sensitive data uh, disclosed from the server. Like uh, somebody got access to the server and they had this particular information and everything. And also the server's private key was one of them. So now this user Dart, he was able to get the server's private key. Maybe Dart was the one who, you know, compromised the server, but uh, he has this <coughs> server's private key now, sorry. He has a server's private key and if he has a server's private key, in short, Bob, whatever data he'll be sending it to the server, if that intercepts that, he'll be able to read the data obviously and uh, that connection which is the HTTPS will no longer be secure. Okay, so the server's private key is with that as well. Obviously there are multiple things which app happen like uh, in SSL, that uh, there's a pre-master secret key shared and the master key is computed. We'll not go into that detail. We'll look into it and maybe some other future videos. But in short, Dart has a server's private key and when Bob will try to send some secret data, which is encrypted actually, if uh, as we saw earlier, right? If uh, you don't have the server's private key, you'll not be able to decrypt that data. But if you have the private key over here like Dart has, so if he gets this particular data which is encrypted, he can actually decrypt that data and get the secret data out of it because of the server's private key. So this is what it was like, you know, the server's private key uh, was compromised over here, but the, or, you know, the owner of the server did not care to regenerate or rotate the keys because he was not aware that the private key over here was compromised and uh, yeah, it was compromised, you're not aware about that. So basically they did not rotate the key, Dart has the key, the key is still the same for the web application server and Dart is able to intercept this particular data over here and read the data and get access to it that way. So this was about cryptographic failures. If you guys have any queries regarding this, please do ask me in the comment section below. If you guys like the video, do give a thumbs up and do subscribe for more upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day. Take care.